Hi there, it's David Williams. Uh, today's topic is the flip-flop application of counters, and we're going to look at how to build counters using flip-flops. Now, what we see here is what we're ultimately going to be working through, uh, working towards in this video, and this is a four-bit synchronous up-down counter. So, based on this this particular bit here, we can determine whether or control whether this counter counts up or counts down. So before we even get into the flip-flop application, let's just look at what a, a 0 to 15 counter or a 4-bit counter would do. It would count from 0 up to 15 in binary. Now let's take a closer look at what's happening in each one of these columns. Each one of these columns represents one of the bits. Least significant bit, next most, next most, and then most significant bit. For the least significant bit, those numbers those bits are alternating every count, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. If we move a column over, we also have a pattern, but this pattern is that it's alternating every other one. So we've got two zeros followed by two ones, two zeros followed by two ones, two zeros, etc. So it's toggling at half the rate of the previous column. Move a column over, we've got four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones. So again, half the rate of the previous column. And the last column, we've got eight zeros, eight ones. So each more significant column, is, its bits are toggling at half the rate of the previous column. So if you remember back to the, the uh, frequency divider application of flip-flops, you should recognize that we could use this frequency division application and create a counter. And here is a 3-bit counter. Well, it's three. So this is a three-bit counter. So it's the same as this one, except with only only dealing with these three columns. Uh, if I wanted to make it a four-bit, I could add another add another bit onto it. The reason I'm using a three-bit is because I actually already have a pre-drawn timing diagram for it. The disadvantage of this kind of counter is that it's asynchronous. Now you'll see there's this one clock control signal that's coming into the to the clock and you'll notice that there's bubbles in all the clocks so these are active um, or falling edge triggered clocks. But the, each one of these flip-flops do not change at the same time. They don't have the same clock. And here's the not quite complete timing diagram for it. But you can see here's the clock, the falling edge of the clock. The falling edge of the clock is when Q0 changes. And because of the propagation delay, there's a little bit of time from the time the falling edge of the clock to when Q0 changes. And then Q0 is the clock for the, for the next flip-flop. So there's the falling edge of this Q0. That's going to control when Q1 changes. So there's this, this time delay, this propagation delay before Q1 changes. And then Q1 is the input clock to Q2. Here's Q1. There's the falling edge of Q1. And there's the time that Q2 changes, so there's a propagation delay there. So if we were to look at the way that the counter is supposed to count, and we just look at the big overall picture, we start at the, all the clocks at 0, 0, 0, 0, the Q2, Q1, Q0. And then the next clock cycle, we've got 0, 0, 1. The next clock cycle, we've got 0, 1, 1. I'm sorry, 0, 1, 0. The next clock cycle, we're at 0, 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0, then 1, 0, 1, then 1, 1, 0, then 1, 1, 1. So we're counting from 0 up to 7. But now, if you look closely, and because of these propagation delays, we've got, well, in this case, it's okay. We go from 0 to 0, 0, 1. But then if you look closely right at this point here, we're going, or I guess it's more right at this point here, we're going from 0, 0, 1, so we had 0, 0, 1 at, at this point in time here. And then at this point in time right here, we've got 0, 0, 0. There's a little bit of time before Q2 becomes a 1, and we're actually at 0, 1, 0. So we've, in this particular counter, during this time period, we have sort of a glitch where the timing, where the counting is wrong. We're going from 0 to 1 to, to back to 0 to 2. And then in this case, we're okay, 0, 1, 1. In, in this little time period here, we want it to be at 1, 0, 0. But we're at 0, 0, 1 for a period of time, so that's 1. And 0, 1, 0, 2, until we finally get to 
uh, well, it's not until here that we get to 1, 0, 0. So there's several little glitches where we're not actually at the right time if we're using an asynchronous counter. Or I should say we're not exact at the exact right value at every point in time when we're using an asynchronous counter. The upside to the asynchronous counters is that they're very simple to design. You just take however, however many number of bits you want, and you just cascade these, these um, flip-flops where the output of one feeds into the input of the next until you have the number of bits that you need. Now to make a better counter, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but we're going to want to make our counter all of the bits, all of the flip-flops change at the same time, so we're going to need to create a synchronous counter. And here's a starting point for a 4-bit synchronous counter. Okay, we've got these four JK flip-flops. They're not cascaded together now. I've got my Q3, my Q2, my Q1, and my Q0 outputs corresponding to over here Q3 column, Q2 column, Q1 column, and Q0 column. And you'll notice that the clock signal is attached to each one of these flip-flops. So all of these flip-flops are going to change at the same time. The only thing I don't have, so I don't have yet for this particular for this particular circuit is what values or what am I going to connect to my J and K for each one of these flip-flops in order to implement this sequence. Now a first naive guess might be to do the exact same thing that we did with the asynchronous counter and just connect all of our JKs to one so we get a toggle every time every time that we have a clock uh, rising edge of the clock but let's take a look at what would happen. Here's my timing diagram for the clock. And so on the timing diagram for the clock, I'm going to have a rising, or the rising edge of the clock. My J and Ks are both set to ones, so all of my tip, all of my flip flops are going to toggle. So since each each flip flop is going to toggle on the rising edge of the clock, I'm going to end up with a timing diagram that looks like this. My Q3, Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all just going to toggle on every rising edge of the clock. So that's not going to work. So we're going we're gonna to have to do a little bit more thought. We're going to have to put a little bit more thought into this to figure out what kind of logic, what kind of input we're going to need for J and K. So let's look at what's happening when we're counting from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. So Q0, the least significant bit, toggles every count. So actually, we could put J and K, tie both J and K to a 1, and we're going to toggle every, every time we have a rising edge of the clock. The next, the next bit toggles only when Q1 is a 1. So Q1 is a 0 here. The next time, the next count, Q, Q1 is still a 1, uh, still a 0. And then uh, on this count, Q0 is a 1. On the next count, Q1 is a 1. So anytime Q1 is a 1, on the next count, Q0, or anytime Q0 is a 1, on the next count, Q1 is going to toggle. Similarly, for Q2, any time that both Q1 and Q0 are 1s, Q2 is going to toggle. So here, Q1 and Q0 are both 1s. Q2 goes from a 0 to a 1. Here, Q0 and Q1 are both 1s. Q2 goes from a 1 to a 0. And Q1 and Q0 are both 1s. Q2 goes from a 0 to a 1. So we only toggle if the previous two bits are, the previous, the less, two less significant bits are both 1s. And finally, Q3, the same kind of rule. Q3 only toggles when the previous, the less, three less significant bits are all ones. So we only have a toggle here when Q1, Q0, or Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all ones. We have a toggle for Q3. And here, Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all ones. We have a toggle for Q3 when it goes from a 1 back to 0 at the beginning. So the logic that we're going to need to do this looks like this. Here's my 4-bit synchronous up counter. This one toggles every clock pulse. This flip-flop toggles only if Q0 is high. This flip only toggles if Q0 and Q1 are high. So you've got this AND gate there. Q0 and Q1 are both going into the AND gate, and that goes to J and K. And Q3 only toggles if Q2 is high, and Q1 and Q0 are both high, so we're just we can using this output of this AND gate to feed into Q2. We could make this a three input AND gate and feed Q0, Q1, and Q2 all into it. That would present less of a t of a propagation delay than having these two AND gates, but you get the idea. And here's the ultimate result. My my circuit here 
and my timing diagram here. You see on the rising edge of the clock, Q0 always toggles. On the when Q0 is a one on the rising edge of the clock, Q1 toggles. When both Q1 and Q0 are ones on the next rising edge of the clock, Q2 toggles. And finally, when Q0, Q1, and Q2 are all ones on the rising edge of the clock, Q3 toggles. We've got this four-bit up counter. Now, what about trying to make a counter that can count downward. So a down counter needs to implement this sequence of events 1111111110 all the way down to 0000 and then back up to 1111. So we need again what kind of logic going into these gates is going to give us a down counter. Now the first bit there is always toggling. The Q0 bit toggles on every clock edge so that's going to work. The Q1 bit here you can see the Q1 bit toggles whenever the Q0 bit was a 0. So here it's a 0, and Q1 toggles from 1 to a 0. Q0 is a 0, and here Q1 toggles from a 0 to a 1. For Q2, it only toggles if the previous two bits, the Q1 and Q0, are zeros. Here Q2 is a 1, and it toggles to 0 on the next count because Q1 and Q0 are both zeros. Here, Q1 and Q0 are both zeros, so we get Q2 toggling on the next count. And finally, Q3 only toggles if Q2, Q1, and Q0 were all zeros, and we get that toggling occurring. So, and maybe instead of using Q, Q to control whether we're going to toggle for each one of these uh, successive uh, JK flip flops, we use Q bar to get a circuit that looks like this, right? Here's Q bar, and Q bar is controlling the Q1, Q, the Q bar from Q, for, for the Q0 is controlling whether J and K is going to toggle. The Q bar from Q0 and Q1 are going into an AND gate, controlling whether Q2 is going to toggle. And the Q bar from Q0, Q1, and Q2 is controlling whether Q, Q3 is going to toggle. And this is how we create a 4-bit, synchronous 4-bit down counter. Finally, as promised, we come to the up-down counter. That's going to either count in this sequence here, which is down, from 15 down to 0, or this sequence here, which is up from 0 to 15. And what we're going to need for this particular circuit is an up-down signal. So this up and then down with a bar over top of it is indicating that we are going to count up if the signal is a 1 and we're going to count down if the signal is a 0. So let's see what happens. Where does this where does this up down signal go to? Well, on the top part here, we've got this AND gate. If this AND gate was feeding directly into J and K, that would be controlling uh, I I guess it wouldn't be the AND gate. It would be if Q0 was feeding into J and K directly, that would be controlling it uh, for for being an up counter. And down here, if this Q bar was feeding just into J and K, that would be controlling it for a down counter. So all of this logic on the top is for the up counter logic, and all the logic on the bottom is for the down counter logic. But we have this addition of the up-down signal. And, and so the up-down signal is going into each one of these AND gates. So if it's a 1, if up, it's, we're trying to count up, so we're enabling, we're essentially enabling all of these upper gates here, all these upper AND gates, to then feed into this, into this JK counter, and to the JK signals of the, of the next flip-flop. And on the bottom here, if up-down is a zero, it gets inverted here, and we're enabling this AND gate, and enabling this AND gate, and enabling this AND gate. And then that's going into the XOR, uh, sorry, the OR gate here, to determine uh, the value for J and K. So we're going to use the up down signal to either enable the up counting or enable the down counting. And now here's a timing diagram for my up down counter. So all I'm starting at zero here, and my up down is set to a one, so I'm going to want to count up. And I could go through the logic and try to figure out what's going on in each one of the gates and to determine what my Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are, but I'm going to just go by the signal here that we're counting up or down. And so if I'm counting up, my Q0 is going to toggle here, toggle here, I'm going to toggle on every clock pulse. I'm just going to go up to this point here. Q1 is going to toggle on every clock pulse if Q1 was a zero before it. 
So it's essentially every other clock pulse that I'm toggling. Q2 is going to toggle on every clock pulse, on a clock pulse, if both Q1 and Q0 are ones. So essentially every fourth clock pulse I'm going to toggle. One, two, three, four, toggle. I'm just going to go up to this point. And Q3 is going to toggle on every eighth clock pulse. It's only going to toggle in the case where Q2, Q1, and Q0 are all ones previous prior to the clock pulse, so there they're all ones, and so Q3 is going to toggle at this point. So I, this so my my clock's going to go. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then all of a sudden my up-down counter switches to uh, tw switches to down, so now, well my Q0 is actually, nothing's going to change. I'm still going to toggle every clock pulse. Q1 is going to change, and it's only going to change, it's only going to toggle if previously Q0 was a 0, so there I'm going to toggle there I'm going to toggle, there I'm going to toggle. Q2 is only going to toggle if Q0 and Q1 were both 0 before the clock pulse. I'm going to toggle there. I'm going to toggle there. And Q3 is only going to toggle if all three were 0 prior to the clock pulse. So, I'm not going to toggle there. I am going to toggle there. And I know I'm not going to toggle anywhere else. So there we go. There's my synchronous up-down counter. And I hope you learned a little bit about counters today. And I will see you in the next video.